Hey everyone, my name is Kyle and today I will be reviewing the film Ready Player One. This is directed by the one and only Steven Spielberg based off of the best-selling novel by Ernest Cline and tells the story of Wade Watts, an 18-year-old kid living in Columbus, Ohio in the dystopian near future of 2045 who spends just about all of his time going into the Oasis, a virtual reality world in which the only limits are your imagination. This world is created by a man named Halliday who was recently deceased but not before delivering a video telling everyone that there is a special easter egg that he has hidden inside the game. And in order to find that easter egg, three keys must also be found. And this starts an adventurous race in order to find those three keys, because if you obtain this easter egg, you gain control of the Oasis. I've been looking forward to this movie for quite some time. I think it was revealed in late 2015, right after Bridge of Spies, or right around the time Bridge of Spies was going to be coming out, that Spielberg was going to be making this film, a sci-fi virtual reality movie. And instantly I was like, I'm in, because I love Steven Spielberg. I mean, what film fan doesn't? He is, and always will be, one of my favorite directors. And this is his first film in years where he is returning to his spectacle roots to deliver another sci-fi adventure film. Now guys, I do have to apologize that I did not read the book by Ernest Cline. I really wanted to, I just simply didn't have the time to. That being said though, regardless of whether or not I read the book, I am judging the film that I saw. So what did I think of Ready Player One? I thought it was enjoyable. I didn't think it was anything amazing though. And that definitely will separate me from a lot of other people that I know who have already talked about this movie. I didn't think it was bad. I have to state that right now because there were a lot of people who asked me either Wednesday night or even Thursday, did you not like the movie? I did. I liked Ready Player One, but I would definitely say I'm far away from loving this film. So before I get into the negatives, let's talk about what I really liked about this movie. For one, the visuals in this movie are really good. I was a little worried going in because from the trailers I'd seen, the CGI looked a little bit unpolished. But here in this movie, it works extremely well. From what I was shown, I really felt like I was in this world. It was a true feast your eyes spectacle, and that, of course, is what Spielberg is known for. I thought every action scene in the movie was very visually appealing, as in typical Spielberg fashion. In terms of the cast, I thought Ty Sheridan did a very good job as Wade Watts with what he was given, and basically the with what he was given could be said about every other character in this movie, because the characterization in this film is very weak, but he is the protagonist, so definitely he has the most character development. Unfortunately, there is a subplot in this movie involving him and the person he lives with that I felt was extremely unnecessary, and it really was only there to just add conflict to the situation. It didn't really go anywhere, and it just felt like it added to the film's already bloated runtime. Olivia Cook also stars in this movie as a character named Artemis, and Wade instantly has feelings for her, and I felt that they worked off really well with each other, of course, with what they were given, but I did think that there was chemistry. There's also Ben Mendelsohn, who is definitely typecast in this movie. Definitely typecast in playing the villain, but he does such a good job of playing the villain that it's always a blast to see him on screen, and I really liked him as always. Now, on top of the visuals, they really utilized the surround sound system, especially for the theater that I was in, because... There were definitely some really cool noises in the back that automatically just went to the front. It was really cool the way they did it. And on top of that, they had a really cool retro soundtrack. I'm definitely a fan of the 1980s. I love the music from that decade. And just about all the songs from this movie tribute that decade, and I thought it was really cool. And with that soundtrack comes the actual score written by Alan Silvestri, who has written a ton of scores for popular 1980s films, including Back to the Future, which was produced by Steven Spielberg. And the score for the movie really does at times feel like a mashup of various films produced and directed by Steven Spielberg. And with that, unfortunately, leads me to some of my issues with the movie. In all honesty, guys, I thought Ready Player One was very jumpy, especially in the first act. And I even go as far as to say the first half of the film. It honestly felt like it just jumped and skipped from place to place to place. And it didn't feel spontaneous, it really just felt rushed. It's almost as if the filmmakers wanted to just get through the backstory as quickly as they possibly could to get ready for the first big action scene and the next action scene after that. And it didn't help that plot-wise, I felt like I'd seen this movie a million times. But what's weird is that the only facet of originality, the actual oasis, is essentially comprised of some of the most iconic characters and objects from pop culture. 
So it's like that type of originality kind of got stripped away because it is filled to the brim with so many characters from movies that we all know and love, but they're just in there. They don't play an integral part in the story. It's essentially, there's that guy from this movie, or there's that girl from that movie, or oh my god, there's the DeLorean from Back to the Future. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other people who would say, that is a truly great thing because I can go back to see it again and again and again to see who that character is in the background or what's that poster in the background because they're essentially easter eggs in a movie that is about trying to find an easter egg. The film just had this over-reliance of having to show all of these characters when I really believe the movie could have just slowed down and tried to develop its characters and create a richer story because there's only so much style can do over substance and this movie is severely lacking in substance. That being said though, there is a scene in this film that tributes a classic horror movie. I'm not going to tell you which one it is because I won't spoil it for you, but guys, not only did I think it was the best scene in the movie, not only was I truly amazed by it, but I was wondering how in the hell did they do that? And that definitely adds to the awe that Spielberg has been able to capture for decades. But honestly, that scene, if you have seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was excellent. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. And I was thinking, man, if they did that for either two or three or four other different movies, that would have been truly astounding. I, I would not have stopped talking about it if that was the case. However, that kind of traverses into the next con I want to talk about, and that is the actual world of the Oasis. This is a world that, as described in the trailers and at the beginning of the film, is a place where the only limits are your imagination. And for me personally, I didn't feel like the movie expanded on it enough for me to really believe that it was a world where the only limits are your imagination. The beginning of the movie definitely tries to make an attempt to show you different worlds and different things you can do with different characters that I thought was great, but I wish it expanded on that more. I wish we could have seen more of these different worlds because what I was shown, what was given to me, I didn't think it was as imaginative or as abstract as I wanted it to be. There's definitely some really cool elements to this movie. I will not deny that. I'm not saying that it's not in there. Thinking about the movie overall, I just didn't think it expanded on the world as much as it could have for me. And what that's basically telling myself is I gotta read the book because I'm pretty sure the book definitely gives an expanded view of the universe presented in the film. Going back to the story briefly, I do think they nailed the ending. I thought the conclusion was great. Like, honestly, I really was impressed with the overall message. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to say anything. I promise not to spoil it. But I really do think it was important, especially for the day and age we live in now. In the end, guys, Ready Player One has some really fun action scenes. It's got great visuals, really cool music, and also good direction by Steven Spielberg. But for me, it's weighed down by the fact that the characters are thin and uninteresting. The story is quite cliched. There's an overabundance of characters from pop culture that I felt just didn't need to be there. And I felt that certain elements of this movie were very rushed, despite the fact that I do think the movie was about 15 to 20 minutes over long. The movie suffered from being unfocused throughout the first half, but in the second half, when it begins to get focused, that's when it's at its best. And I really wish that the whole movie was as focused as the second half was. In conclusion, I'm going to give Ready Player One a B. So if you guys saw Ready Player One, what did you think about it? Did you love it more than I did, or did you think it was just okay? I'd love to hear your comments, so please send them down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much, as always, for watching, and stay tuned.